All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's talk a little bit more about texturing. Today, we're going to learn an easy way to make a carbon fiber texture. Now, I already know there's a couple of videos out there already, which already show you how to do this, but I just figured out a pretty simple way to do it. You don't have to learn to use a million different nodes. You can do this in about five minutes. Now, this tutorial is based on a part of a chapter from my book. So if you like this tutorial, please check that out. I am going to leave a link in the description. So here's a quick overview of what we're going to do today. First, we're going to model a carbon fiber texture, quite literally. Then we're going to bake that texture as a normal map. And then we're going to apply that normal map to an object as a texture and we're going to have a carbon fiber texture. So first of all, let's delete the default cube as always. And we're going to add in a plane. Now we have to reshape this plane by simply taking an edge from the side and moving it inwards while holding down control so that it snaps to the middle to the y axis over here. And this way this plane is now one unit wide and two units long, we're going to create a loop cut here in the middle. And we're going to lift that loop cut up a little bit and we're going to bevel it all the way to the edges, right? And now we just add some smooth shading to this. And we're going to set our 3d cursor to this corner over here. And let's also set the 3d cursor as a pivot point. So that way, when we rotate this object, it rotates around the 3d cursor instead of around the origin. And now in edit mode, we're going to select everything, we're going to duplicate it, snap it back with the right click, and we're going to rotate it by 90 degrees. So now this is the first little puzzle, if you will. And we can just duplicate this. And if, if we do that enough times, it's going to start looking like a fabric. In other words, it's going to start looking like a carbon fiber surface, you can see that if we copy this enough times, it starts looking like a fabric. Now, of course, we're not crazy enough to duplicate this 100 million times. In fact, we're going to use an array modifier, actually, we're going to use two array modifiers. So let's add the first array modifier. And in this array modifier, we're going to uncheck relative offset, and we're going to collapse that menu. And we're going to check constant offset. Okay. Now in the constant offset, we can check exactly what the distance between the separate objects of the array are. Now in this little menu, we can set the exact distance between the array items. So first of all, on the x axis, a distance of one is just fine. But then we're going to set a distance of one on the y axis as well. As you can see, this pushes it in the wrong direction. So it doesn't really tile well, we're going to set the distance to minus one on the y axis. And now they tile pretty well, and we can just increase the count and it's going to keep adding more of these objects in this direction that we defined with these you know, numbers right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and add like 35 of these. And now we're going to add our second modifier, which is going to copy this in the other direction. So we can create a larger surface like that. Okay, so let's collapse the first modifier. And we're going to add a new array modifier to this object. And once again, we're going to delete, uh, we're going to deselect relative offset because otherwise, it's just going to copy this object and move it in the certain the given direction by the distance or by the length of this first object, which doesn't make any sense. In our case, I'm just going to tile these uh, in a very uh, weird way. So let's deselect that. And we're going to check constant offset again. If we have one meter, we get this weird bat looking shape here. So we're going to play around with these numbers a little bit one is still not enough. Let's try two and two on both of the axis on the x axis and the y axis. And as you can see now, they tile pretty well, and we can just increase the number again, and we get a large surface, which pretty much looks like carbon fiber from the top, right, or any kind of uh, textile if you really zoom in. So let's also add like 35 of these, or maybe 35 is too much Let's add 20. And now we have this large surface, so you could also increase the number on, on the, the other array modifier if you want, and make the surface as large as you want. Now we have this surface. And now we're going to bake this onto a plane as a normal map. And we're going to use that normal map as a texture. So let's go ahead and add a plane in the middle or at the origin uh, of our little world here. So we're going to press shift s and we're going to set cursor to world origin. So that way the cursor just snaps right here. And we're going to add in a new plane. Now it's very important that this plane stays exactly in the middle for now, we're just going to scale it by any multiple of two such as 20. And the reason is that we're scaling it by multiple of two is so that we can have a perfectly seamless texture, I'm going to show you exactly what that means in a second here. But now we scale the plane by 20. And it's still exactly in the middle. And now we have to move this plane. So it is entirely on top of this uh, texture that we created right here. And so no edges are peeking out uh, the sides. And we have to make sure that we don't use a smooth a smooth movement like this. So because then it's not going to be seamless, we have to hold down control while we move it so that it snaps onto one of the little pieces of the puzzle here, let's say. So we're going to hold, uh, move this press x to only move it on the y axis and hold down control to snap it, and then just move it anywhere into the middle of this uh, large surface over here. And as you can see now, uh, this is perfectly seamless, because in any way that the texture starts over here, it's going to end in the with the piece right before that one. So if we create another plane like this, 
it is going to start in a perfectly seamless way again on the other side and you can just duplicate this texture scale it as much as you like and it's still going to be perfectly seamless you're not going to see any repetition in the texture okay so now we have this plane in place let's go to side view with one on the number pad and let's lift this plane up so it's slightly above the surface of this carbon fiber texture that we modeled over here and let's select this plane and let's go to shading uh, the sh shading tab over here and uh, we're going to add a new material to this plane all right so in this new material we also need an image texture node okay let's add in an image texture node and create a new image okay so we're going to click new right here we can uh, leave the default height and width and we're going to name that normal map let's say and just leave the generated type on blank and we're going to click ok and now this map uh, this image here is ready for baking so we're going to use this image and we're going to bake the normal map onto that image now before we begin baking it's very important that we use the cycles render engine because this is not going to work in eevee okay we can't bake normal maps in eevee as far as i know at least so let's go down here in the render properties uh, tab and let's open up the bake menu and also before we begin baking let's also open up our normal map here in the image uh, in the image editor uh, window right here as you can see it's just a black image that is because we set it to blank over here when we were generating the image and now we're going to turn this image this black square into a beautiful carbon fiber normal map so we have to set the bake type to normal over here and we have to check selected to active okay so that means we select uh, the plane and then we select the carbon fiber texture or we can also do it the other way around let's just double check because i think it only works one way but not the other and make sure that this image texture node is selected in this little menu right here with all the other nodes and at this point we just click bake and after hopefully a few seconds and not a few minutes you should have your normal map baked in this menu right here it looks beautiful doesn't it so now we have this image and we can just go ahead and save that really quick and now we save this texture to our computer so we can use it next time and we don't have to do this all over again now let's delete this uh, object with the arrays or let's just move it to the side in case we need it later we don't have to create it again and now let's focus on this plane right here okay so on this plane we have a material which we can't see at the moment because we're not in viewport shading but let's let's go to a uh, viewport shading over here and we're going to plug this normal map into the material here so we're going to see the normal map on the surface of the material okay now this is a normal map so it doesn't work like a normal image we can take this color output and plug that into a normal map and you're not going to see you're going to see something on the surface but it's not really the effect that we want okay first of all we're going to have to plug this let's go to render view here first of all and add a source of light so we can see what's happening okay maybe a point light you can see there's something going on but it's not exactly a pretty result maybe we can turn this light into something a little bit more a little bit more visible maybe we can set the brightness to 1000 like this and we're also going to set a color to this material over here so we can see what's going on a little bit better like this maybe this bluish kind of color and then we have to run this uh, image text image output here through a normal map node to tell blender hey look this is a normal map this is not a normal picture so we're going to add a new node we're going to add a node called normal map and we're going to plug that right there and as you can see now we have this beautiful normal map which works exactly like it should work and if we rotate around and reduce the roughness, uh, the roughness so it shines a little bit you can see that this looks exactly like a normal map node and it's pretty shiny and it's beautiful right you can also have a look at it in the viewport shading display and if you want you can also play around with the strength settings to increase or decrease the strength of this normal map now we produced a carbon fiber normal map i guess you could have just downloaded one off the internet as well but i think this is a pretty cool thing to know in case you ever need this technique for something else in the future anyway we have the image saved to our, our computer and let's say that now we want to apply the carbon fiber texture to an object let's say this diffuser in the back of this the race ship that we have right here so we select the object add a new material and then we just add a node wrangler with Control t and we're going to plug that into the normal map instead of the uh, base color input over here on the principal bsdf now right away we're going to map this uh, from object we're going to map it as a box and we're going to load up our texture image right here or our image texture rather now as you can see right here we can immediately see the pattern on the on the surface here but it's not exactly the result that we want quite yet first we have to set this to non-color okay and we have to run that through a normal map node so we're going to place that there now it looks a little bit better but it's still not quite the result that we want first we need to make it a little bit darker so we're going to change the base color to black and now things are starting to look a little bit more interesting of course if you want to increase the detail of this texture you can just increase the scale in the mapping node over here so you can just set every value to two and it's going to double 
uh, the scale of this texture. Okay, so that looks a little bit more detailed and realistic. Maybe we can go even higher. So it matches this texture right here. But let's just say for uh, simplicity sake, we're going to leave it on one so we can see exactly what the texture looks like if it's a little bit larger. So we have that mapped correctly over there. And now we just have to play with a few more settings in the principal node to make this look a bit more realistic. First of all, metallic value all the way to one. Second of all, we need to add a clear coat. So we're going to add, we're going to set that value to one. And then we get this smooth, uh, shining look on top of the surface. But while we still have the normal map working underneath, so it kind of looks like uh, there's some kind of polish or some kind of coat on top of the, uh, the surface, which is exactly why it's called clear coat, quite obviously. And we're going to set the clear coat value to 0.1 or something like that, just to make it a little bit less uh, shiny. And then we can just play around with a few of the other settings, such as the roughness, we can just reduce that a little bit, which is going to affect the roughness of the surface underneath. Okay, you can set that to whatever you like, but I'm going to go with something like 0 0.3, 0 0.35, something like that. And I'm also just going to adjust the specular value, I'm going to reduce that a little bit. So it's about 0 0.1, 0 0.11, or something like that. And now we have this beautiful looking carbon fiber texture, we can also just now increase the scale of the texture here, we're going to set that to three. And now it looks like a beautiful diffuser matching with the back of this vehicle. Thank you for watching. I hope you guys learned something from this video. If you did, please hit like and subscribe and leave a comment below and stay tuned because in the next video, we're going to talk a little bit more about texturing this little race ship right here and how to create this livery with texture painting and using this uh, normal map that we created today. So stay tuned. I'll see you guys in the next one.